Okay, um, today is Saturday, November the 28th, 2009. Uh, we're chatting with uh, Drs. Daniel Darvish and Dr. Babak Darvish, um, who are founders of the uh, ARM organization. Um, they're involved with uh, critical research, genetic research, uh, involving the Iranian Jewish community and uh, other communities who are affected by um, genetic diseases. Um, either one of you gentlemen, can you tell me a little bit about um, this genetic disease, uh, HIVM, and also who is specifically affected by the disease? Want to go ahead? Go ahead. Well, HIVM is a, dis it's a muscle wasting disorder that usually starts after the age of 20 and often leads to very severe disability. Both Bobby and I are affected with HIVM, and we recognize we were affected um, in our mid to late 20s. We're both um, 40 now, and uh, we've both been using the wheelchair for about two to three years. Um, interestingly, it's, it's, it's a bit different than uh, other common muscle diseases like Duchenne muscle dystrophy or, or Becker muscle dystrophy, in that the disease is caused by a gene that, that is expressed at very, very low amounts in the muscle unlike uh, Duchenne and Becker. So because of this, we think um, it's going to be treatable more easily than, uh, for example, Duchenne and Becker muscle dystrophy. And uh, this is the focus of our work. And over the, over the course of past uh, 10 years, we recognized that almost everything that we had imagined to be true turned out to be true. And uh, mouse models of the disease have been treated already. And we're working very hard to start human clinical trials um, uh, so we can deliver the therapy to the patients to see if it's going to be as effective in patients. And uh, we've got a tremendous amount of hope, and um, it takes a little bit of money, a little bit of time, but I'm sure pretty soon in the near future we're going to get there. Yeah, just something to jump in there and clarify, although Danny looks younger than me, he's actually older. I'm 40, he's 42, uh, but I have the receding hairline. Um, going back to the question you had, uh, Carmel, is that the, there are two cluster communities that are affected by HIVM. One are Middle Easterners that are predominantly affected. Eight or nine out of ten patients are going to be uh, from Middle Eastern background or heritage. Another smaller cluster is an Asian cluster. There's a fair number of uh, Japanese patients, Korean and Chinese patients who are affected. But we now know that this disease affects people from all walks of life. We have patients from all communities. And so this, you know, we've learned about this with more and more genetic research. And the most exciting thing is what Danny already said, in that we are beyond the discovery phase. We are now in the phase of uh, having demonstrated success and benefit in the animal model, and we have to bring this to the bedside to the patient. And as soon as we can demonstrate safety and efficacy in humans, it can be made available. But that is very much uh, dependent upon the financial resources. It's just work that's left to be done and money that's needed to do the work. Um, can you tell me some of the taboos that are associated in the Persian Jewish community in uh, publicly discussing issues dealing with health, genetics, and specifically HIVM? And, you know, what have been your reactions to those taboos over the years? You, you know, you're touching about one of the things that has been the greatest obstacle in, throughout our journey and effort in advancing both the science and this cause as a social cause because of the social stigma of disability in general in our community, in our small displaced community, we've had a very hard time getting other patients with this disease to come forward, come out of the closet as it were, and put a face to the disease. As a result, there's a very small number of patients. You know, I could probably count the number of patients in our community that are out on two hands. Um, whereas in the other communities, we're seeing more people come forward. So that's been a significant uh, uh, challenge and we didn't set out to change the social mores of our community but some of the early work that we did specifically resulted in doing just that in inspiring people to come forward with whatever it was they had whether it was a physical disability or other to make them more comfortable but our work is cut out for us we have a lot more to do to um, have our community evolve as it were into a more accepting more inclusive community Okay, you gentlemen um, spoke at your gala last year about uh, HIVM, uh, this genetic disorder affecting a wide range of people. 
Um, what would you like to see from other uh, medical organizations, other uh, social groups? What kind of interactions, partnerships um, are you looking to form with them? I think partnerships is very important. And the more partnerships we can form with other medical organizations, the faster the activity is going to go forward. Um, as with most rare diseases, one of the um, obstacles is that the total number of patients for each disease is fairly low compared to the amount of funds you need for research and development. So that's, that's the main reason why therapies are not developed more rapidly. Um, this is why you see multiple therapies available on the market for common disorders, um, such as uh, high blood pressure or high cholesterol. And uh, there is over six or 7,000 rare diseases. More than 80% of them are severely disabling. A lot of them um, could have therapy based on modern medical technology, but that therapy is just not tested and not brought to the market um, because of the expense and because the number of patients are so low. Mm -hmm. So this is... Um, this is something that uh, if we can tackle with other rare disease advocate groups and other medical groups, um, both in Los Angeles and throughout the United States and throughout the world, um, hopefully we can, we can have an impact not just for HIVM but for all rare diseases. What message do you have to individuals, uh, family members, friends of people who uh, know of someone with HIVM? What advice do you give them? Um, you know, when they ask you, hey, I know someone that has HIVM, what do I do? How do I help them? What, you know, how do you respond to people who say that? Well, you know, first and foremost, I think that they should recognize that there's tremendous hope. You know, it's right now we commonly say it's no longer about finding the cure, but about funding the cure. Um, there really is just work left to be done. There's no discovery. So particularly patients that are early in the disease course, there's tremendous hope for them. I, I can honestly say, and I'm willing to stick my neck out, that within my lifetime, I will see them not progress worse than what, where they are at that particular time. It's a matter of getting the treatment to them, getting access to it. Um, so number one, foremost, it's don't give up hope. All right, gentlemen.